Continuing with the system development life cycle and development, um, a couple of uh, specific um, aspects of, of programming which you may or may not encounter, uh, but which have um, uh, illustrate uh, certain concepts involved in uh, application security. And uh, so we might as well uh, deal with them uh, that way. Uh, the first being object-oriented programming. Now, uh, I have probably made my feelings on object-oriented programming plain. Um, from my perspective, it is... Um, a layer of abstraction and therefore in in one sense a danger you are um, hiding uh, certain aspects of what you're doing from yourself uh, so the uh, there is a danger in not fully understanding what actually is going on in the computer um, it is a layer of abstraction because uh, CPUs don't operate in object-oriented ways. Computers don't operate in object-oriented ways. Um, when the you you program in an object-oriented language, it turns um, the the compiler turns the uh, statements the the program that you have created in the high-level object-oriented language into a, a procedural machine language and so in a sense you you are not aware of exactly how this is operating unless you're you know very uh familiar with the the operations of the compiler itself and and the language uh however um that aside uh yes it's very popular these days it is very widely used um but, as I say, you know, there are certain aspects of it um, that relate to security concepts, and so we'll use it as an example. Now, object-oriented programming, we have objects. Um, objects contain methods, which are, are sort of the functions uh, in, in terms of the ideas of pro procedural programming, and messages, which are... Um, uh, can be data, can be seen as data, can also be seen as commands. Very often, uh, to invoke uh, a function, we are sending a message from one object to another object uh, in order to uh, call up that function. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, passing uh, data in order to... Uh, have the the data that the uh, the method is is going to be invoked with is is going to operate on. Um, and now, uh, one of the uh, big aspects of object oriented programming is reuse. And I mean, we've talked about object reuse and and the dangers of object reuse, but you know th that's in terms of uh, objects, either memory or physical objects, that actually contain data, which we have to make sure is, is cleaned out uh, when we reuse the objects. In, in the case of objects, um, in object-oriented programming, of course, we are using, uh, reusing code. Um, we, so we, we reuse the object, and if the objects were properly implemented in the first place um, with the appropriate security, then we obtain all that security in, in reusing the, uh, the objects. And of course, um, reuse, uh, reuse of code, object reuse, um, is a, a good way to maintain proper security if you are, uh, you know, doing it properly, speeding up the process because you don't have to reinvent the wheel, if it's been done right, reuse it. Now, uh, there, uh, there's another uh, issue of objects, and that's encapsulation. Um, we uh, encapsulate 
an object and so the um, the data held within the object can be hidden from other aspects of the system. Uh, and again, you know, this, this provides us, can provide us, if, if done properly, uh, with an extra layer of security in terms of the confidentiality. Um, indeed, in terms of the integrity, if we ensure that the data is encapsulated and cannot be altered. Um, uh, again, you know, do it appropriately, but there is this uh, security uh, provision if, if you do it right. Um, there's, oh, uh, polyinstantiate, oh, where are we gonna, well, let's, let's, um, let's just go with inheritance. Um, when we reuse an object, it inherits, uh, the, uh, the functions, the, the methods, um, and therefore any security provisions that, that were put into, uh, the original object. And so, as long as we don't uh, mess with it too much, then yes, we inherit those uh, security functions and we can ensure that the security is done properly. Um, again, making sure that we do it properly. Um, but there's, there's polymorphism. Um, we can modify... Uh, an object when we, uh, uh, you know, it, uh, we're reusing an object, um, we can modify it. Now, there is the danger with polymorphism that we morph, change the object to such an extent that it no longer has the security provisions that we're relying on, the, the security functions there. So that's a, that's a danger. We have to, uh, take care of that. Um, uh, polyinstantiation. Uh, we create a new version of an object um, and again um, we're you know using polymorphism there so um, there are uh, some interesting ways that we can use this. For example um, there are object-oriented databases and we'll talk a little bit more about this when we get into database security but um, we can actually create an object where we've um, we've got uh, data that's supposed to be secured. But in this particular case, this uh, object is not to uh, divulge that information, and so we can encapsulate the uh, the secure classified information um, to a higher level so that it it is no longer visible, it no longer appears. And, and by creating this, uh, uh, you know, polyinstantiating and, and slightly modifying an object, we have the original object where we can obtain the classified information, which we use in appropriate levels, and then this second object, which um, it will no longer betray that classified information, that confidential information. So um, there, there are a number of aspects of um, uh, object-oriented programming which we can use uh, uh, to, to illustrate um, uh, security concepts and also uh, if, if we use it properly um, it can give us security benefits. Again, use it properly.